welcome to the podcast pre-show. We are so, so thankful for you all to be here and to be joining us. We are currently streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And one of the cool things about the podcast pre-show is, A, we get to know each other a little bit a little bit more. So let us know where you're tuning in from and who your favorite character from this episode, episode 603, who it was. That would be so great for us. Plus, sharing is caring. So friends on YouTube, if you want to copy that link and share it somehow, please let us know and then come back to the chat and write Je suis Pue. Friends on Facebook, you can hit that share button and share it to your fellow Outlander groups. Share in a message to a fellow Outlander friend. You can pop it even on your own wall and say, hey, does anyone else out there like watch Outlander that, you know, I don't know about? Come on over and join the live chat. That would be super helpful. And um, I see, let's see, Angela. Hello, hello, Angela. Would you mind doing me a favor and sharing this into the clan gathering and the book club? That would be amazing. Um, we're People on... Um, Instagram are saying they can't hear me. Yeah. Can you it's hear fixed. me? Okay, good. Um, Instagram friends, if you could do us a favor, screenshot this and throw it in your stories and tell everybody, hey, join OutlanderCast right now for the live chat. That would be super great super great. And if you share, please come back and write in the the chat hashtag Jesse Pray. And we'll try to give as many of you as a shout out as possible. Um, so the way that this podcast works, if you're brand new here, is you get kind of the fly on the wall experience. The more you chat in the chat, the better the experience for you. You're going to find people who agree with you, disagree with you, people who love Outlander, who live near you. You're going to find pe people from all over the world who love Outlander. So Blake and I are going to be doing our podcast. Now, our podcast can be found in whatever podcatcher you like, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those. So if you have to leave, if you can only watch us for a little bit, just know you want to go. <coughs> find and subscribe to Outlander Cast in your podcatcher app. That way you can get caught up and listen to the rest of it. We are going to try to check in on your feedback, but know that we can't the entire time. So please don't be like, you're not reading my comment. There's no way we could read everybody's comments, but we may pick and choose from a few here or there. We also do a second episode um, for the listener feedback. So make sure that you're following us at Mary and Blake Media, whether it's on Facebook or on Instagram. Just search Mary and Blake Media. We're going to be making sure that we take your feedback from there. Also at jointhenerdclan.com. All sorts of places. Um, the Outlandercast Clan Gathering and so many other great places. So all that to say, we're happy you're here. We're so thankful that you're here. Make some friends in here. Um, and Blake, if we can start to come on up and read some juicy praise, that would be fantastic as I do a little sharing. Okay, um, let's see. Who shared? I don't know. We got so many comments here, it's it's hard to see. I, I, I know, I just pick work. a couple. Pick a couple to say thank you to. We got Susan. Thank you so much. Thank and you, Susan. Thank you, Victoria. Yep, Angela has shared on the gathering. Thank the book you club. so yep. much, Angela. Karen, I thank really, you so really much. appreciate it. And awesome. And Allison as well. Thank you very much. Yay, awesome. All right, friends. So we did have an episode drop this morning for the listener feedback for like half of it, and then I got really tired. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can, and we will be doing the rest of that listener feedback in the very near future. But I have limited reserves of energy as I am still struggling with – the long panorama. And so let's get things started here so that, that way we can capitalize on what energy I do have. All right, here we go. Okay, so we have to do this thing called room tone, which is super quiet for about 10 seconds so that Blake's able to capture the essence and sound of this room. So it's awkward. So take this time to get to know each other a little bit. You kept this family together while I was at Ardsmuir. You helped me in my print shop when I was grieving for Claire. And with this, on one hand, you made some of the finest whiskey ever pass my lips. But you will do so again. You, the only one who can show your son what a useless man like you can achieve. And how proud he can make his father. He did again 
But it's you, not what you do or give or provide. It's you we need. I once was, Lord. I don't know if I can be that bad again. You can. Rhode Island, welcome back to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. Oh, my name is Blake. And uh, what an episode. What an episode. Oh my gosh, right? I mean, for many of us, we've now been able to watch this episode several times. There are just things that you're going to want to rewatch over and over again. Lots of points to talk about. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pumped about this episode. Now, if you're in the future, if you yourself are a time traveler and you come back to this episode of Outlander cast, we want to let you know that this episode is episode 603 and the basic TV guide mini recap that we got for you is Jamie's authority is tested when, oh wait, is this the same one? Nope. It's, it's, I thought you had put this in. So never mind. I'm going to like make this up and riff. Okay. Roger goes through some deep, scary stuff. Baby floats down the river. Not Roger. Fergus goes through some deep, scary stuff. Roger saves, saves a wee bairn from the river. Um, the family's just going through a lot of tough stuff right now. And a lot of truths are open up to, to them all. And um, I think that's really my basic recap. TV guy does a much more eloquent version. The family's going through a lot, but they're opening up to each other. <laughs> and Tom Christie's hand was operated on. <laughs> so, all right. So before we get into the rest of the show, we want to make sure that you know you can find Blake and myself on all sorts of social medias. We are available on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, just search Mary and Blake. And, of course, we want to thank our friends who are members at jointhenerdclan.com. If you are watching live, give yourself a shout-out. JoinTheNerdClan.com is a one-stop shop to really support this mom and pop podcast. You can give a hashtag GoNerdClanGo so you could see some other NerdClan members who are joining live. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for making all of this possible. All right, let's get into the show. Blake, break down the episode details for us. So the title was Temperance. The writer was Shayna Fuel. She has been uh, part of Outlander since 2018. She has written Blood of My Blood, If Not for Hope, and Monsters and Heroes. And uh, the director was Justin Malotnikov. And I don't have his um, credits up here. Hold on one second. I messed this up. It's Okay. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see. He's a fancy man with a good uh, He eye. has directed uh, episodes of uh, Poldark, Lucky Man, uh, Doctor Who, Atlantis, Da Vinci's Demons, and Merlin, as well as uh, Shameless, uh, and some other stuff here, too. But that's uh, those are his big credits. Awesome. All right. So we love to kick things off early on the episode with our kilt ratings. The kilt rating, of course, is on a scale of one to five kilts, one being it was a terrible episode. To five being it was one of the best. So if you're joining us live on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, let us know what your kilt rating is from a scale of one to five. Um, Blake, what's yours? I'm going to give it a four, four. That is so low. No, I don't think so. I think um, I, 
I am creeped out by Malva, and okay. I am creeped out by uh, Tom Christie. And okay. I think he's got some weird stuff with Claire going on right now. All right. Uh, and but I think that the stuff with Roger and also the what we played at the beginning of our episode here is what saved the episode. Oh, saved. Wow. Okay. Hey, um, I'm giving it a five kilts. This is my favorite so far. Of season six, I have loved rewatching it. Um, so next, we're going to delve into the GBGs. This, of course, is the good, the bad, and the great of the episode. A nice little Oreo sandwich of things. So I'll kick things off. My good, I don't care how basic it is. Can I get an amen for some kilt in this episode? It, it was even what Jamie was wearing when he was talking to Fergus. He had some of his nice uh, tartan showing, and I love that he's just able to still rock it. So here, 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 here for any tartan that I get to see. Um, all right, my bad. The CGI of the basket going off the waterfall. I know it's something small, but I couldn't unsee it, and I even rewound it a couple times. Like, they had a normal basket. Why didn't they just let it fall off a little waterfall? It just looked really weird. And for me to notice CGI is bad, that's how you know it's bad. Unless it really was a real basket and it just looked CGI to me on my TV. And then my great is this family. Yes, they are going through hard things. And I got to tell you, you know, I was sitting here and this episode is hard. They're going through hard things. They're digesting their own traumas. And I just think that it's, it's it can be difficult. And here we are. We've all been in like difficult past couple of years. But... This family is a village and they are helping each other. And people who are not struggling currently at the moment are able to help those that are. And I think that that's truly beautiful. It makes me envious that I'm not living on the ridge right now, man. I would love to have one of those villages myself. Um, so that's my great is I just love this family and I love how they're helping each other right now. Yeah, for me, the good was, um, you know, the funny thing is, I, I don't know if the show has figured out how to write Roger finally um but i i gotta say that even though uh the CG even though the actor gave me a fish pin yes even though that happened <laughs> and uh even though the cgi with that scene was very bad it was um and the way that he spoke to the kids and how he even spoke to germain germain and, and like that that deep guttural germain like that um germain! yeah that was that was um like in talking about how like Satan will drag them to hell, like Yowza. I, it's I, funny because we've been able to meet Rick Rankin. Yeah. And like that was so not Rick Rankin. Yeah. That was Roger. The one hundred percent seen him flopping around. I wonder if he got hurt on some of those rocks. I know, right? And part and of me was just kind of like, double. just run a little bit more, man, and you would have gotten to that kid no problem. But you just when you're you on did slippery the, rocks, you, you did can't the dramatic thing. So Veronica saying finally Blake is a Roger fan. No, I'm not there yet. Oh, but Catherine said hashtag justice for Roger. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that I I think the show is finally figuring out how to write Roger, and uh, I think that's a good thing. Agreed. So uh, my bad is actually a tie. Uh, when <laughs> Angela said clutching my heart, it's the big one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the the first thing is Lionel Brown just appearing in a fade in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, that was not great, Bob. I thought that was cheap and cheesy. It looked bad. It, How would you have preferred they do that? I would have preferred him just be there. Just when she looks up, boom, she, he's right there, not fading in. Okay. Uh, and not fading out. Like, I don't want any of that. It reminded me of, uh, and I hate, to, I hate to admit this, but it's the truth. It reminded me of The Dark Knight Rises when... Uh, Raz Al Ghul hashtag spoilers uh, talks to uh, talks to Bruce and he's like yeah I'm just gonna be here and I'm gonna haunt you forever and he just like fades away as he's like being really creepy it was just man come on that was so cheap and cheesy I don't want that and uh, that's how that felt uh, when I only want real ghosts not cheesy ghosts yeah like I just think uh, yeah a Ferris here on Facebook says I agree Blake just jump cut to him yeah 100 percent just jump cut with where you know, or smash cut, whatever. Just like where when she looks up at the mirror, he's behind her and he says what he says, or he says what he says, and they move to her in the mirror, and he's just there. I would have much more appreciated that. Ooh, the Laurel says they should have done Lionel Lionel in the mirror, like Jamie and Frank at the statue in Inverness. Uh, yeah. Um, 
But that's a question. Are they trying to have Lionel be a ghost in some way, shape, or form? Or is it all in Claire's head? Because well, yeah. you can't say that Jamie appearing to Frank, season one, episode one. Well, I think I would argue that if a, if a ghost is going to appear, it would be Lionel to Marceline, not Lionel to Claire. Right? Because Marceline was the one that killed him. Yeah. So uh, my my sense is that it's a figment of her imagination, not a, not a ghost necessarily. Okay. Um, but I mean, there there could be an argument to be made because he died in her house, and if if that were the case, um, how do ghosts work in Diana's universe? We are still finding out. Yeah, I would agree. And my great uh, oh, my other bad was when Malva and um, Ian are just walking, and she's like, "So my mom was uh, my mom was killed." And Wait, why is this bad? Well, hold on, hold okay. on. Uh, my mom was killed, and yeah. she was she was a witch yeah. apparently. And Ian's just like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna whistle past that graveyard. We're not gonna delve into that at all. Why wouldn't Ian react that way? Well, because you'd be like, what happened? No, did you, you see you would Ian's say, puppy you would, eyes? You would say, oh my He's god, not really what listening. You would say, oh my god, what happened? He's just daydreaming. Although there was this reaction when he, when she initially talked about her dad or whatever, and he's like, yeah. He's kind of weird. Like yeah. I just I liked that. Um, and my great, obviously, it has to go to um, Jamie and Fergus. This this scene is a special one. It is one that uh, I think helps define the show, and I, I think it works on so many different levels. But the important thing is that Jamie has. Fergus, remember that it's specifically him that um, his family needs. And it's specifically, it's not just anybody else. It's not just any man. It's not just somebody else who could, who could come in who's got two hands. It's they need you because you're the husband and you're the dad. And uh, it doesn't matter what happened or what's going to happen. Um, you were there to help me. I'm here to help you and your family needs you. And uh, Caitlin like Marie writes in, it's about time Jamie talked to him. I agree. Where have you been, Dad? Yeah. Um and, and I, I just I'm busy. I just like the fact that the show is able to reflect a little bit more in this relationship because it has been so busy with everything else um during this time, like during the the run since Adult Fergus showed up. Um, he's been somewhat of a side character, so I am ecstatic that the show was able to dedicate as much time to him, not only in this episode, but in this season as much as it has, mm -hmm. because that feels real to me. That feels, the emotional math adds up. It doesn't feel like, oh, it, the, and I guess we can get into the analysis of the rest of the show, but the emotional math of what Fergus did does not feel dramatic for the sake of being dramatic. It feels as though it is a natural buildup to a character who is suffering and is struggling with his role um, since a major, major happening in his life. And it feels like someone who is making a poor choice because he doesn't know what else to do. Mm. And the fact that they can build onto that character the way that they are and have Jamie interact with him the way that he is, is a special thing for that relationship and what that means to not only Jamie, but to uh, Fergus and Claire and how the, all three of them have this kind of symbiotic relationship, even though he's the son, you know, within quotes. Uh, yeah, I like that. feels good. Good, good. So a lot of things happen in this episode and everyone kind of has their own storyline and things that are going within them and and they, they also get to have um they get to all kind of have like happiness and sad moments you know they get to have all of this mixed together so um i figure we can just kind of go in order of timeline of how things went in the show yeah if sure. that works for you sure so we of course start things off with Henri christian in the basket and we get that amazing scene like you said with Roger reprimanding the boys. Um, and to be honest, 
the kids are just all kind of blended together for me. So yeah, I, I didn't necessarily you. be like, oh my gosh, Jermaine's with that bunch and this is what's happening. And, you know, um, so I'm happy that I almost think that Roger yelling Jermaine so strongly has now really helped solidify with us, you know, because the kids like the kids just change. It's a new season. They get a little older, all this kind of stuff. So for us to truly it, it made me as a viewer like really be like, that's going to be Jermaine. So I can tell him apart from all the other kids coming up because there's a lot of grandkids and there's going to be just a lot of kids in, you know, on the ridge. So I liked that for me almost mm -hmm. you know the, the yelling made the made it super important to me so um but i am disappointed in jermaine i'm disappointed that he is, is he let these kids take the baby and put him in the water well i mean after his father's reaction to the baby how can you like blame him <laughs> for what uh is i mean he he, he saw his dad's reaction yeah uh, and and there, I mean, there is some truth to the fact that he's also seen his mother's reaction, everybody oh. else's reaction. But when your dad does something like that to who is your baby brother, it's like, yeah, you know, maybe something is wrong with the kid. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe I will burn if uh, if I touch this kid. Oh, Roger, then baptizing him. I mean, this man. It's so interesting because he's in this episode, he's just so well acquainted. Like everyone's just so well acquainted with the times. But for a moment, I forgot he's a time traveler. The way that he handled these kids and baptized this this wee bairn in, in the river. And, you know, you forget that this is a man from a completely different century. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a man who's been at university. He's done all, you know, been on planes, like done all these things. And yet he is. He's kind of taken this this right-hand man role, you know, this uh, general, not general, what's the next, what's the second in command, lieutenant? Sure. I mean, yeah, role on the ridge. And even if it's just, even if it's just the authority in this, the place of worship and the authority with the kids, you're really getting to see him be a standout person. And so they go back to Fergus and Marcelie's house. And I wanted to just drop a pot of, Something just to make a big cling when Jamie's like, oh, OK, so the Baron's OK. All is well, then all is well. <laughs> and and I'm like, Jamie, I wanted to yell at my TV. And thank God the timing with Marsley was so on point. Well, I should drown a lot of them in a well, says Marsley. And I'm like, yes, 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 girl. Oh, giving her some big <laughs> FIs. A little bit of a bad for me would be that Marsley has lost the baby weight a little too quickly. Okay, after that, <laughs> after having this baby, but you know, I know they don't want her just to like wear an extra bump because Lord knows she has been wearing a bump for now. How long? She's been pregnant forever. Oh, yeah. I feel like the least the past season and a half. So they were probably like, fine, you can lose the baby weight because you have a bad relationship with your husband and you're not eating anymore because you're upset by it. Like, we'll just we'll just whistle past this one a little bit. Um, what makes me. Um, so so sad about this I, I think i just want to jump for a second is when fergus is able to th say that he thinks that ami christian is the way that he is because his wife was beaten mm -hmm. and he believes that he he is at fault for that yeah because he wasn't there to protect her you know we are so fortunate to live when we do and to have the advancements in science and to know all these things we know and you ca you really it, it just puts things... I, this episode really made me think about the time travelers. You know, about how lucky we are that we would know that dwarfism isn't something caused because you weren't there and your wife got beaten. Like, it was just how Henri Christian was, was already being made. It's not Fergus's fault. It's not Marcelie's fault. It's nobody's fault. And um, I just think that you kind of step back and you, you have to realize, like, oh, yeah, Fergus doesn't know. Because Fergus isn't a time traveler. You know what I mean? Like, they're all there together. So it's easy for some family members to have this knowledge and to have this, of course, it's not your fault. But we need to keep in mind that half of the family isn't from the future. And they don't have the scientific knowledge. Mm -hmm. They have, they, they, they all come from, like, superstitious lands, you know, that they don't have necessarily explanations for things like dwarfism mm -hmm. and... So um, 
I don't know, that's something that I really enjoyed about this episode is I had to keep pulling back being like, what do they know? Mm. You know, and then you got poor Ian in the middle. Who's who's kind of living in both Who worlds. Who knows yeah, some yeah. things, but not everything. And the other thing, too, that you have to keep in mind, too, is that even though, you know, um, uh, Fergus isn't from the future, all in, Mary, you're right, he comes from a mystic, not mystic, but just like a, a background of accepting these kind of odd things that we look at now as odd, but at the time, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, the other, e even irrespective of all that, is Fergus has experience with dwarfism, and it was one that was not great. And there's a friend, yeah, a friend who's just Luke. who just <sighs> cut his throat, cut in the in in the in this alley, uh, and you know he was being used as a toy essentially. Mm -hmm. um, it's again not. I'm not providing an excuse for Fergus. I'm looking at it from his perspective where it's like, I can understand why he would have that kind of reaction and then feel even more upset at his reaction and what that would then entail with to his relationship to Marsali. Uh, yeah, I... I when, when you feel like, and even Marsley saying, like, I'm going to have a whole man or not at all, I know that's a callback to, pre, to previous seasons, but I, that does not feel to me like the best opportunity to say something like that to, to Fergus, uh, especially, you know. Because he's missing a hand? Because he's missing a hand. And, okay. And how that. <laughs> you know, it just just too many hand jokes going around. You, you, you know, you you know that he's already he's already sensitive to that commentary. Why even broach that subject at all? Mm -hmm. But I mean, but when things are said in the heat of the moment, that's what happens, and it is what it is. All right, let's talk hand surgery. So Claire leaves Fergus and Marsley's house. Her grandbaby was just saved from the river. She's freaking out because these kids are superstitious, thinking the baby's going to burn them. She's just, and Claire's the one that, she's the physician, so she just had to, like, check the baby. She pretty much had a pediatric appointment right there. Her heart's racing. She huffs it on over to the big house. And who's waiting there for her but Tom Christie? And what does he say? Oh, it took you so long. I've been waiting for 40 minutes. Like, how long was I going to have to wait? You didn't even have an appointment. You weren't even on my schedule. I can't be here all the time. There was a baby down the river. And he doesn't even, he asks at the end. She says, I'm sorry. My grandson was just like down the river. The kids think he's superstitious. They have all these superstitions. Ba, 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 ba. You know, do you feel that way? No, I don't. And it's not until the end where he's like, so how's the baby? He's fine. Okay, good. Like, buddy, you lead with that. Yeah, pretty much. That's what you're supposed this to do. This is the first mention, though, where he says, I don't think you're a witch. And, yeah. I, and I'm a man of a, I'm a learned man. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little... I, oh, there's some stuff going on here with, with Tom Christie. What do you think? Um, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, the way that he speaks to her is, is one of, like admiration a, a, a testament of admiration but also judgment mm. in many ways okay. and it's the it reminds me of the the, uh, the way that like you know you like somebody but you, you hate the fact that you like them Ooh. and you know that it probably ain't, probably ain't right i don't know what you're talking about aside from like music no it just or i'd be like oh my gosh i can't believe i like this song so much um can I tell you what it is? Sure. Kids Bop Thunder. The remake from Imagine Dragons. <laughs> thunder. Feel the thunder. Poo, poo, poo. My kids and I listen to it. We don't need to listen to the Kids Bop version. It's not like there's bad things in it. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but we listen to it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that there is some irony in Tom saying how how much of a learned man he is and you know, I know you're not a witch but then he you know he he treats Claire the way that she does with the you know the 
the the book and how he is so insistent upon reading his prayers and not listening to Claire about the ether because it's you know it's the devil's ju- what a juice or whatever the hell he Potions. called it po- yeah sure like I, it just it's so ironic that he is able to quote and you can believe him when he does say it like I believe that he is a smart guy like but he still holds all of these uh old truths that don't apply to reality uh and and it the show almost kind it, the the show almost makes a mockery of him in a sense that Jamie is the one that's reading the prayer book and it's almost played off as a joke oh my gosh for him to be like the right hand oh fitting yeah right right <laughs> um and 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 I'm not saying that's bad. In fact, I, I quite liked it. Like I like the fact that the show winks at you a little bit. It 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 um the show winks at you knowing that it's in on the joke with you. Yeah, and, I love and I it. I like that. Uh and so um I like the fact that the show can tell you that the, that Tom is right and good in a way but also a complete clown in another at the same time. Won't take the ether. Didn't want to take the whiskey for a little while. Yeah. Then we don't want it to go to waste. So he's fine. Once I don't know, he realizes and, the pain. And the other thing too is that like Tom does this thing with Claire where he makes sure that Claire knows that, you know, he doesn't think that she's a way. It's like he's trying way too hard to impress Claire or to like, I don't know. It's, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's funny, you know, so much of Claire is the healer, right? And I think that part of me is like, why did we spend so much time on his hand surgery, if not just for comedic relief? And maybe that's what it was there for. Mm-hmm. Gross surgery, which you know Claire's got to get at least one of them in a season. She mm-hmm. needs a gross yeah. surgery, all right, where we're all like squirming, being like, dang, Claire, you do the, you cut really well and you're gross. So that's what I'm thinking is that this might be – one of the gross surgeries. Um, then we get the comedic banter. You know, the right hand, the whiskey, get the bucket. But aside from that, it took a lot of time. Sure. And I feel like, like you're saying, you know, there's all these references that he makes in addition to it. And maybe it's also to, like, um, dilute the other references. The the I don't think you're a witch. I'm a learned man. Because then we have that part where she goes and checks on him. AKA looking for a little bit of ether. Yeah. You know what? Before we get into that, why, oh, okay. don't, we, why don't we thank our, our, uh, our partners today? Okay. So, um, if you want to dress like a true Scotsman, you need a kilt. I mean, hello, did you hear me? It was my good of this episode is to wear a kilt. And Scotland Shop are your experts on hand to help. Look no further than scotlandshop.com. Kilts come in hundreds of different tartans, fabrics, and of course, have to be made to fit you. We know this might seem a bit daunting, so Scotland Shop offer virtual appointments via video calls so they can talk you through how to order and help you take your measurements properly and to help you figure out what accessories and extras you might need. Because I got to tell you, if you're going to be going to some events of the Scottish ilk, you need all the accessories. Blake knows. He showed up thinking he was one of the finest chaps at our... No, I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was a jabroni of the highest sort. Our tartan ball and... But, but you know what's great about it is now he knows what's on his wish list. He yes. knows what he wants to be getting next, and we can get that at Scotland Shop. So they even offer a clan consultation if you can't work out which tartan you can wear. So you can go online and book appointments with their amazing staff, and you get to hear their authentic Scottish accents, which will just, you know, make you be happy in general. How can you not smile when you listen to someone's Scottish accent? Let them give you a hand to choose your tartan and make uh, take your measurements. This will be an authentic, traditional kilt made in Scotland just for you and you can get it 15% off by going to the coupon code section OutlanderCast there's tons of great stuff there yep 15% off with OutlanderCast as the coupon code that's it so Mary let's let's talk about Tom Christie and how you know he he again the irony of him saying that he's a learned man uh, essentially saying that he wants to be able to use his hand to do learned things, yet really what he's trying to do is take out his frustrations 
on his daughter, who yeah. may or may not be his daughter, given the timeline of what has happened. Mm-hmm. And oh, there is a there is this juicy bit of stuff. Is it the hair? Uh, no, it's got a lot of hair. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it, yes. <laughs> Creepy, creepy, <laughs> creepy, creepy, creepy. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Something Why don't you ain't wear right. a hat? Because I don't want to wear a hat. Something ain't right. I'm, I'm busy saving lives. But there's nobody this, got time for a hat. There's this juicy interplay. And it's not it's it's not written necessarily. Juicy. Are we it, talking about the book? The filth? No. Um it's not written necessarily on like to you know, in your face written. It's just implicit. The fact is, Claire was going to go huff some glue when she... when Do she ether. Yeah, okay. when she was gonna, okay? And as she was about to, Tom is the one that wakes up and stops her from doing it. And instead of relying on huff and glue, mm-hmm. Claire does well what she does, and that's save people. Yes. And that is all thanks to Tom being awake... And it's again, it's not intentional. It's not like he thought this up and said, "I'm going to save Claire." But the and that's why this is again. I use the phrase "juicy." It's just, it's just punchy. It just feels right that a person who is clearly going to cause Claire and Jamie a lot of stress, he is the reason why she isn't falling back on ether at this moment. And there also, in my estimation, seems to be some kind of there. There's going to be some kind of tension. All right, you know what? I will. I will Bring do. It on. I'll, I'll. I will do an early outlandish theory. <laughs> okay. There has to be some kind of tension between Jamie and Claire, as it relates to Tom, because Tom is definitely, you know just cozying his way up to Claire in a way that I don't think is good. Okay. And the the whole hair comment and the the the, the and then the way that it's almost like he's kind of like hitting the girl that he doesn't like and that he likes. You know, like you know when you're a little kid, you just pick on the girl that you like or you hit the girl that you like. Uh, well, nobody liked me when I was a little girl, so I didn't know of any of that. Um I was too tall. Uh, so I just, that's what I feel is happening between, oh, no, that's what I feel is happening on Tom's side as it relates to Claire. And in a way, like he's, in a way that he misses his wife and he, I think he sees Claire as the version of his wife that he doesn't even know that he wanted. Mm. Uh, in much in the same way that I think Malva sees Claire in a way that she could be the mother that she always wanted. Mm. And in response to Tom feeling the way that he does, I think he beats Malva. Mm. Like even more so because he has these guilty feelings about his wife. He's got these guilty feelings about Claire and Malva's there and like watching that girl see her dad in so much pain and deriving so much pleasure out of it was like a little like she's going beyond Dakota Fanning weird. Like it's, it's like, whoa, weird. Interesting. All of us who know the future, thanks to the books, we have a resounding interesting. So please put that in the comments if you are joining in live. Yeah. Uh, As we always do for, for Blake's outlandish theories. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I just. What do you think pushed Tom over the edge with the book? That it was filth. Did he get aroused? Yeah, I'm telling you, he's got (laughs) these weird feelings for Claire, and he's got, and and I think he again, it's he who doth protest too much. It's like, yeah, that book's filth. It sucks. Yeah, well, it sucks because you enjoyed it. He like wrote like notes. Yeah, he wrote it in the margins. You could tell. It's like those guys that read Outlander, and they're like, "Yeah, that book sucks, guy." Yeah, but then, the, the, then you catch him reading it in, in the dark corner one day, and 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 talking about blood of bone of my bone and and all the other stuff. I loved how he was like, uh, "Claire, do you know that Jamie has scars on his back?" 
And she's like, yeah, "Yeah, man, we bone every night. Yeah. Sometimes I lick the scars. I don't even know. She wouldn't do that, though. That's more Blackjack Reynolds. Yeah, that's, yeah. Maybe she puts oil on them. Sure. You You know, know? some vitamin E. Yeah. You know, to try to, like, help with that. And vitamin C. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, sure. You You know? know? But, and she's like, yes, I know. And he's like, well, do you know where all of them are from? Like, he's trying to get cred. And he's trying, and he's... Cred, yeah, but he's also doing this thing where it, it like he's bad mouthing Jamie in front of Cliff. Like again, I'm telling you, he's like a he's like a 13 year old boy that likes this girl and doesn't know what to do. So he like he bags on her and he and then she st- and then he starts making fun of her boyfriend. Like that's what that's what Tom Christie is. He's got all these feelings bubbling up, and because he's been so emotionally uh, stunted. Because of these weird things that he's got going on. Tom Christie's a weird dude. Oh, you want to know what the best part is? My best, I mean worst. Hey, so um, I think I'm going to be besties with these guys called the Browns. Yeah. That... And Claire's like, no, they're actually wretched, terrible people. So promise me you won't do that. And he just puts his hat on, doesn't say yes or no. And skedaddles on out. Yeah. Thanks for helping me with my hand. I get to go beat my daughter. Mm-hmm. And I made some new best friends who don't have scars on their back and aren't, you know, six feet four and yeah. aren't K- king kick of men. my ass. Yeah. A- they're like day. my style. We, we even have the same hairdresser. <laughs> That's I why even, they're my best friends. I even look like the other guy. <laughs> I, I, they, even, I, they actually didn't even know. I just started to walk in with them, and it was like Home Alone, you know, where they got the extra kid in the van. I just walked in, ate their food, hung out. They sound pretty cool. Oh, man. So we need to figure out a name for our time-traveling segment. Oh, we do, yeah. Because we didn't do one for the last episode. That's true, And I we realized didn't do it. that, and I'm like, oh, man. Well, we ran out of time. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. So, um, oh, we did run out of time. You're right. Yeah, we did run out of time. Alas. Alas. Okay, so you ready for sure. our little question? And okay. We, yeah, I, we need to I, get like music for it at some point music. and do it. Um, hold on. Let's see if I got anything here. If, if I if I have something, I'll play it. Let's let's see if I got okay. anything. Uh, no, I don't. Sorry. It's okay. Oh wait, I, I could do this. No. It's okay. It's a little too American-y. It's, it's, it's just very, yeah. Hey, you know what? They're from America, so it's okay, because it's all about Brie for this time-traveling <laughs> question. I'll pick our American girl for it. So what would your next toy be that you would make that sneakily is from the future Oh, the that vroom. you can nickname Vroom or whatever? Oh, that's a good one. Because I thought that was really cute. You know, Brie is now make has made the the wheel yeah. for <laughs> for Marcelie, and in comes little Jammy with the room. And why do you call it room? Oh, it's just the sound he makes. Somebody put here. Um, <laughs> Caitlin puts the Wayne's World music. I like that. <laughs> and then somebody else put. Oh, Denise put. You need the Jeopardy theme, but on bagpipes. Oh. See, I want something from season six. The soundtrack for season six is so so good. It is that it, it needs is. to be highlighted. All right. So, so what, what would, I would make you as make a toy, as a toy for I... like a little kid that is like a nod to something in the future, but the people in the past wouldn't know? I'll tell you, I wouldn't make matches. I'll do that seriously. Uh, Fail. Man, that's a great question. As a toy, what would be a good toy? Um, as a nod to the future. I mean, like you could say boat, but like they already got boats. They don't got cars, but they got they got carriages. Yeah. So, I don't know what I would make. Ooh, Astrid said the pull dog on a string. She could get away with that. Roger and she could get away with that. That's making true. that that thing. The or like the little like oh you know what? No, no, no. Quack, quack, no you quack. know what but I would do? Like what I, I would do a plane. Really? I would do a plane it, because it would. Would I you mean, call it a bird? Uh, narratively, narratively, it would call back to Roger and his parents. Yeah. So that would make sense that as as a, as a young Cute. kid, Roger played with the plane, and Roger would want his kid to play with the plane as well. Um, well, in the opening like montage with the song, yeah, there's a little toy plane. So I would have I, you seen it? I I don't. I'm not sure if I ever remember it. In this, yeah, in no. like, yeah, like season six it. opening. Okay, you're gonna see it. it. So okay. maybe it was just osmosis. Yeah, probably. I mean, it was just a subconscious choice. <laughs> Nancy, Nancy says she'd make Play-Doh. Nancy for the win. They can make Play-Doh. Yeah, they can make uh, Play-Doh. 
That's oh, right. Oh, no, they need cream of tartar. Oh, yeah, they don't. Don't you don't need that, that, or is that for meringue? I, I think no you idea. need it for Play-Doh. Wh- what is even cream of tartar? Uh, I, uh, what is tartar? It's tartar and why cream. do they make cream out of it? We're going to find out what tartar Please is do. right now. I know about plaque tartar. I hope they're not catching people. I mean, they've got enough dirty teeth back then. They could scrape off all the tartar they want. It was slinky. Look at everyone. They're coming up with some great, great ideas in this. So, so fun. Awesome. I, I like this fun little thing, especially because this episode, as I said, it's got so many hard moments, but I love that the family is all here to help each other through it. You know, we're able to have Marsley opening up to Fergus saying, I murdered a guy. All right. What is cream okay. of tata? Ready? Tell me. Cream of tata is cream of tata is a dry, powder-like, acidic byproduct of winemaking. Oh, my God. Just get um, Lord John Gray to send yeah, it. Yeah, called for in a myriad of di- di- different baking recipes from cookies to cakes to frosting. Grapes are a natural source of cream of tata's main oh, ingredient. Easy. Tartaric acid, hence the Tata in its name, and when tartaric acid is half neutralized with potassium hydroxide, cream of Tata is the result, crystallizing into a hard crust on the inside you know, of wine barrels. Like they're not making wine, obviously they're they're making whiskey. Um, so I don't think they want to waste their time with grapes just for play doh. But as I said, just put in an order. With Lord John Gray. Hey, Jemmy's birthday's coming up. Barbara says calling Sir Gifts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Gifts a lot. Oh, we do I love him. about that. That was great. That was a, that's a deep reference. Good job there, Barbara. Um, I had something that I thought you'd be very proud of me about. Okay. I noticed the lighting somewhere. Did you? Yes. Okay. Not in the scene that we have on the screen right now. In Fergus and Marcelli's home. When uh, that whole scene where he's drinking and um you know germain is like i'm hungry i'm hungry but the lighting was just so beautiful and they really showcase i don't know what they're called right now my brain's having a a fog but the candle holders that have kind of like the plate behind them that Mm -hmm. really kind of amplify the light it was so beautiful in that scene for those of you go back and watch it soon just note the lighting the way that it really kind of um encapsulates marsley with it still being dark Mm -hmm. there's a lot of shows that can't do that well and and you really have you you nailed it outlander gets the candlelight and firelight lighting down so well because a lot of the conversations do happen at night when the family's home together you know they're they're doing different jobs throughout the day so we have to have these beautiful moments here and sconces thank you heather and then the other thing that you have to recognize too is that and i've noticed this in season five and certainly season six and i know we talked about this i think last episode the intentionality of the shots and how soft sometimes the camera is um, with its with its focus and how the the fe- the the depth of field in the camera is so like even things in focus like when you're looking at Claire's face or uh, Jamie or so they're closing up on like. When Jamie was signing the the document from uh, for the the British government to give over the guns, like you could see just his name in focus, but the rest of it was was softly out of focus. Mm-hmm. That is happening a lot in this season on many different scenes, and it's just so intentional. Like even the sh- like the shots with the. Uh, except for the bad CGI, but like with, with the baby and, and like even being intentional with the shot of the, of the camera in the, in the crib or in the basket as it's floating down the river, you just, in seasons past, you just didn't see this kind of Mm. uh, direction and you didn't see this kind of cinematography. Mm -hmm. And I, if you're watching live, You'll see that I stopped on this photo here and uh, on this slide, and I stopped on this photo on this slide because for people who are home and listening, or not home, but people who are, don't have the video aspect, yeah, it's where Jamie is kneeling down. He's talking to Jermaine, um, and they're in the big gathering family room or whatever oh, with the fireplace. It's painted teal, and it's painted teal. And the reason why I'm calling this out is because is Adso sleeping in the back. Is that little gray little tuft? Oh, it might be. That's a good. That's I'm a just good. gonna imagine. I don't know. You want to the white? It's so it's blurred out. out of yeah. Focus. Um, 
I'm calling it out because it is so well composed with the coloring. You see the fiery red orange uh, in the background uh, that is separating Jamie from the background. And then on the left hand side, you see this bright yellow with this really sharp contrasted white right here on the shoulder of little Jermaine. Um, I feel like we have to yell his name. Jermaine! Jermaine! <laughs> uh, and in between is this beautiful teal that is acting as the opposing force against these yellows and oranges. And why does it look so good? Because it's opposites of the color oh, wheel. everyone's saying it's a hat. It's not ad so. Well, whatever. In my mind, it's ad so. It's ad so, sure. In a Stats little basket. Um, <laughs> and the show, whenever you see this, this room... The show really works. Not a room. A room. But a room. Yeah, it's a room. Not a room. Not a room, but a room. <laughs> when you ever see, whenever you see this room or the room in the room, the show really works its magic because of this teal wall and the, the teal paint and the covering because of the orange candlelight that is lighting up the house. It is stunning. And I that's why I had to call out that scene because it's just... So beautiful, so beautiful uh, on, on how they handle that. You know, as you got this pulled up with Germain, um, it another thing that I was thinking about in this episode were what it's like to be a sibling of someone who um, has special needs, mm -hmm. and how a lot of times people, um, you know, there's there's a lot of extra pressure and responsibility for a child like Germain who now has. Um, his brother who's going to have differences than him and he's going to continue to be responsible for him and to stick up for him. And it just stood out to me a lot. For those of you who don't know, my older sister um, ha has severe special needs. And, you know, it's always been something that has been a part of me and a part of my story, particularly when we were much younger and we, we lived together. Um, and it even made me think about families who their first child um, – has needs and they choose to have a sibling so that that child has someone at the same uh, age mm. essentially to help care for them um you know i think about a friend of ours who was on the east side um you know and she specifically said that and it took a lot for them to have a second child but she said i don't want she and her husband were a bit older in age when they had their son who who has a disability. Um, he's 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 great. He's he's super healthy and functioning and doing incredibly well. But she said we want to have a sibling for him to have this relationship for his life to help care for him. And like I've had conversations with my parents. I'm my sister's still alive, but like it's just known like that I will be taking care of her. And so I don't know. I just. I don't get to have conversations frequently about what it's like to have someone who has, you know, special needs. And for, for my family, severe special needs, where really you do have that conversation as a sibling because age does come into factor. And when mm -hmm. Fergus said that, he said, yeah, milady, like, I know you and Jamie won't do anything bad to him. You're, you're getting older. I mean, especially for those times. You're getting old. Mm. And then I'm going to get old. And then what? Jermaine threw him in a in a friggin' basket down the river. Like, <laughs> who's gonna watch him? So it just, I don't know, it just stood out to me. Um, and that's why I'm saying, like, the family elements of this episode just continue to be such a strong thread. Yep, yep. Uh, one thing, I, the last thing I want to talk to you about, Mary, is is uh, is Masley and the way that she handled Fergus, and the choice that she made to tell him that she killed Lionel. Yep. Um, obviously her intent was one thing mm -hmm. to prove that, you know, it's, it, it's not just up to Fergus to, to care for her. It's they're they're a team yet, despite her intent, the result was one of, well, that's just one more thing that like, you shouldn't even have to do that. That that's up to me and I'm the man of the house. I wanted to get your thoughts on how that was handled, and did you think Masali handled it properly? By telling him that she she can fend for herself and that she killed Lionel? Well done. Yeah. Yeah, good job, Marsley. I'm glad she finally got to say something. I mean, this has been a long time for having to keep that secret to herself. Yep. You know? Good for her. Yeah, yeah. 
And I like that she's telling him, I'm not frail. I'm not meek. I want you here. You're part of this family. And she didn't mean it to be belittling. So. Yep. Yeah, I it's it's an interesting dilemma. And again, this is when the show lives in gray and... Why do you think it was gray? Like, what did she do that was wrong? Because I don't think she, I don't think what she did was wrong. I think her intent was one thing, but it ended up being another. And looking back on it, you can, I can see why it would be reasonable to reassess that decision. I think that you can look at it and just say this is a relationship. Like, this is relationships. People say things and things are interpreted in different ways and Mm -hmm. like it's one of the beautiful things that diana captures so wonderfully with these complex romantic relationships you know obviously fergus and marcy love each other and obviously you know you know they had such young love and the complexities of these relation of these partners who who grow older who go through big things together um i just think that it's i think it was an I think that how she handled it was perfectly fine, but yep. I think that it shows how people interpret things, especially when they're with their partners. Um, yeah, yeah, and again, I'm not saying that Marcelie was wrong. I'm just I'm 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 noting that there that in that interpretation is a great thing because it allows conversation to be had. I mean, just even in the Marceline needs to go to the future because she would just kick butt. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. <laughs> Okay, can I call out a couple of things? Yes, please do so. Jamie having the poker versus the baby. Oh, loved it. Touch one or the other. Loved it. Wonder what that was? What? That was my upbringing, I feel like. that's <laughs> When I saw that, I was like, that's something that my mom would have done. Did Jamie do enough? My mom would have those... said, you have to do one of these. Yeah. And one of them's going to hurt. Did Jamie do enough to punish those kids? Yes. I think so, too. Yes. I and I so. love how he would, like, he narrate, like, look at you, made him laugh. Like, truth be told, Henri Christian probably just farted, and, like, yeah, the right. gas made him smile. But well done, Jamie. But I did. I saw that, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is such a Scottish thing to do. Yeah. Like, oh. You're going to do this, or you're going to do that? And Which then Claire, Claire's like, what would you have done if they touched the poker? Then they would have gotten hurt. I'm like, oh, yep. my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else who has, like, Scottish family where you're like, yes, they actually would make you do weird stuff like this. It's scary as hell. Yep. Um, okay. Every once in a while, something happens in an episode that I can't unsee. Okay. Like the basket, but worse. Or Jamie's Adam's apple. Okay. So this is Jamie's Adam's apple worthy. Okay. I'm going to ruin something for y'all. Okay. <sighs> when Claire comes back from being with Tom Christie, doing the whole like, you got a lot of hair yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. wanted ether. I fed Adso. I talked with Adso. So cute. I freaking love Adso being the um, emotional support animal that, yeah. that Adso is. So she comes back and Jamie is literally sitting like Rose from Titanic. Yes. I... Uh, yep. Like, Jamie, just say I want to have sex, okay? Because that's how you're laid out on the bed. Like, Sam Hewen did not look natural at all. Mm-mm. And I know that in book he wouldn't have been sleeping that well anyway because Claire is out of bed. In show, Jamie seems to be just fine. But, like, look a little more natural. Who looks like that in bed? Nobody. He honestly looked like, pe- he was like one of your French girls. Yeah, he was flexing. Well, and he's just sitting there. Yeah, with his arms perfect, like... And his chest, like... Are you showing all of my pecs? Like con- the- concave. <laughs> You're like, guy, calm down. How many push-ups did you do before this scene? Oh, my God. it You just, you can't unsee it. You're like... That's when you're out of character and you're like, Sam, knock it off. You don't look natural. Yeah. How did they let that go? You know that them covers would be up. Like, he'd be underneath the covers. No. If Jamie wanted to have sex... Oh, it would just... No, he- no, yeah, you're right. I feel like if Jamie, I feel like if Jamie was awake, he would have just been naked, holding his legs, being like, so, how was Tom? Is he still crazy? You know, like, don't pretend be asleep sexy. Yeah. Okay? Either be sexy or be asleep and drool like the rest of us. (laughs) Just whatever. Just just do something other than flex. That was not okay. And do 40 push-ups before you before you hit the camera hits you. How would you like to collect cattails? Uh yeah, I'd be out on that. Like, 
fun question. Sure. What do you think are the purpose of cattails? I have no idea. I have zero point Make up zero a purpose. Uh, so that bugs get caught in it. I don't know. The cat, the things that Ian and Malvo were pulling up, those are called cattails. Yeah, did I you know. know what it, okay. Yeah, I know what cattails How a cat do bugs is. get stuck in it? Uh, they get stuck in the little tuft of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The hell do I, what the hell do I know what cattails do? We have I just cattails know. all around here. It, it doesn't mean I know what they do. You didn't listen on any of your historical trips when you were a kid. What do they What do? They do? Do, do they Everything. make arrows? You could do so. No. Okay. No, well, they're then, not They're not like that. Well, then what, what do they do? Are they, they, Lots are they, of stuff. Are they for fires? You can use them as torches. Okay, sure. Okay, because there's got like some gray oil inside those little hard things right there. So you can use them as torches. You can eat the stalks. They taste like either cucumber or corn. If you eat them raw, cucumber. Cook them, coin. I ain't eating cattails. Listen, man, when you it's are weird, when you that's are hungry, weird. that's weird. But yeah, Malvo you can use weird. them as torches. They, you can literally use the entire cattail for all different purposes. Sure. Freaking. I, I just I was thinking of you in that scene. If you came back from time, and if Auntie Claire was like, "All right, Blake, your job today. Raj is gonna go and like you know rustle up a baby, and Blake, you need to go get some cattails with with Ian." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, like, why? Like, what for? Claire, I'm from the future. <laughs> I, I, what's this gonna do? I, I don't know. Like, and if if it's like for fire, okay, I get it. Like torch. Yes, sure. they have. Yes, it's one of the purposes. Sure. Okay, I'm glad. But, and freaking Malva and Ian, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, they're young and horny. I I don't know how I feel about this because she's Dakota Fanning weird, and he is just way too sensitive right hey, now. Hey, if you're stuck on an island and there's only one person your age who's single, she's touching his face with yeah. the mockings. Oh, you and... know what that did? I I know oh, yeah. it's it's sent him bubbling up. I but it he's just, like he's got good things and got, bad things you've lived. He's got a pants tent right going on. Well, and she just learned that sex feels good. What what do you mean? Oh my God! You've blanked out on like this important thing. When Marcely is trying to be in labor, yeah, and Fergus is pleasing her, yeah, in whatever way he is, because we don't know, but there's multiple ways, obviously, and you could do whatever you want when you're in labor. You go to town, mm-hmm. and Melva's like, "Oh my gosh, what's coming?" Oh, on? okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Right, like, yeah. they're doing some stuff, girl, and some people like it. And it feels good, and you see Malva be like, "All I want to do is a boom, boom, boom." Yes. In a vroom vroom. Yep. Just shake your rump. Yep. Yep. I got you. So that's why I'm saying, like, you're stuck on a ridge. He he got full on pants tent when she touched his face. Because he's not gonna go after the frog milk woman. No. Well, Eden's mom. Oh, oh my god, the minister. Yeah. Oh, I got. Oh, oh, do I have an outlandish theory? How did Roger not freak out about the size of that bullfrog? <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> like I'm serious. That was a big. That thing frog. could. That thing's magical. It'll take you through the stones. I've never seen a frog. Yeah. That big. Did it drink all the milk? Is that how it got so big? To just go gold. <laughs> <laughs> that was big. All right. Uh, you got anything else you want to say about I this? I thought episode? you wanted to talk about Aiden's mom because you got. Oh you, well, you I got her. an outlandish theory. Oh okay. Um, that's all I had to say. So yeah, I I Malva. Ma- Ma- Dude, Dakota Fanning weird. I, I, we called it. <laughs> Kayla Marie said it's Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor grew Does up. Somebody found Trevor. You're a wizard, Harry. Oh, that's pretty funny. Good one. Good one. Good one. All right. You ready for uh, the Outlandish Theory of the Week? Yes. Want to let you know that this Outlandish Theory of the Week, of course, was brought to you by Weebox. <gasps> I love Weebox. Mary, tell me about Weebox. Weebox. Well, I'll, I'll pull up my notes. You first tell about Weebox. All right. So, listen. It, Weebox is, is a little gift that you get sent uh, from... from. Uh, it's a wee gift, one well, might from, say. From Scotland. It's actually not that small. It's not. It actually comes pretty big. And, you know, by the way... That's what she said. It's a purple <laughs> box. Uh, and it comes with uh, usually five gifts. Um, and, and that it includes treats or things that you can't buy outside of Scotland. So, oh, my gosh. They're so cute and they're so special. And what I've loved about them is occasionally inside the Wee Box, there might be something that I may not be able to use. Um, you know, because they, they, they send you all sorts of gifts. Yes. They, and because we have friends who love Outlander and because we have family with Scottish heritage, we just give it as gifts. I can like give them some of these gifts because they are super like they're from Scotland. They're stuff you're not going to find from here. So there've only been like a couple of times where I'm like, I'm not going to make as much use out of this book 
but I know my dad well. Right. My dad, who like loves the fact that he's Scottish. Oh my yeah. gosh, he's <laughs> he's he's he is, a hoot. He is in on it. <laughs> he is so in on it. So and it comes wrapped in newspaper yeah. from Scotland. And that's a cool thing too. And it's a subscription thing as well. So you get one. Uh, once a month, and it's it's great. So go to WeBox.com. Let us let them know that we sent you there from Outlander Cast, and that is that. All right, here it is, my okay. Outlandish theory. All right, so listen, this lady, what the 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 mother? I don't even know what Aiden's mom. A- Aiden's mom, sure, okay, Aiden's mom. Way too I think much. They've only named her once, so we can call her Aiden's mom. Aiden's in trouble every episode, so we know Aiden. <laughs> Way too much niceness going Bullfrog on. Bullfrog lady. Bullfrog lady. Way too much niceness. Okay. Okay. Too many things happening here, and and all I can think of when Roger's sitting there against the wall, and and they're talking and they're laughing and whatever. All I can think of is Mary telling me. <laughs> all the book readers. I know the name. It's just Blake. I know doesn't know it. <laughs> Amy. Okay. Amy. Sure. Whatever. Amy. Freaking See, Amy. This is how I knew he was gonna react. So I'm like, you just Stats you would just call nerds. her Eden's mom. Eden's mom. Bullfrog lady. Probably okay. a lot of a lot of show watchers will be like that lady. Eden's mom. Yeah. So, but so, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god! Everyone keeps saying online, Amy, 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 Amy. We know. Amy. Um, okay, so Amy, let's use her real so name. Amy's there, okay? Amy and she, Bullfrog. And, and, and she's talking to Roger, and all I can think of is Mary telling me, don't go talking to <sighs> to women, because women are bitches, and they will do things that are crazy, and they will they will say weird things, and they will do awful things to get your attention, kind of like how Tom is, is, is flirting with Claire right now. The, the, and Roger is just stepping into a pit of fire oh my right God. now. With, just like with you. Amy. With Amy. Blake's like, I'm just going to be helpful and be your friend. Yeah. You best be watching out. Yeah. And like, all I could think of is just like Mary saying, like, nope, women are bitches. And I've been right every time. And she has been right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that you weren't. Yep. Like, you, you were. You we absolutely know. were. We know. We know when someone's like croaching in and being like, let me tell you about the problems I'm having with my boyfriend. Hell no. That's what diaries are for. Back off. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is that Amy and Roger, way too nice. There's, there, there's just something brewing here. And I'm not saying Roger's going to step out. it's not milk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe Roger's getting a pants tent. I don't know. All I'm saying God, ew. All I'm saying is that there's something. I don't even like that phrase. Something's happening here. And I don't like it. And it may be outside of Roger's control. Maybe he's just trying to be the nice minister that he's going to be. But Amy, she got too many things going on. Too many red flags. I mean, this, she's a stage five clinger. You can feel it already. More so, almost as much as Malva. Stage five clinger. She got red flags, alarms, red alerts should be should be sounded off in Roger's Why? head. Just she's just she, staying home. I know she's got a kid Aiden, who's who's she, doing she, bad things. She's she, got a bad kid who's a rebel. Bad rouser. kid who needs a father figure. She don't got the father around anymore. She got frogs in her milk. She got frogs in the milk. No one there. No one around to tell people, hey, to. To, to screw the way that Roger did when it when it comes to uh when it comes to Henri Christian telling you Roger's trying to do the right Blake, thing. Like speaking from experience. Watch out. Watch out, Roger. Yeah. R- Roger. Mm-mm. Nope. This ain't this ain't gonna be good. Ain't gonna be good. All right. Let's close this bad boy out, shall right. we? Interesting. All right. Oh yes, that's right. Thank you, Mary. Mock me. Please hang up and try again. <coughs> All right, here we go. you all so incredibly much for hanging on out with us whether live or in the future listening on a podcast uh, speaking of podcasts i would love it if you haven't yet left us a written review in apple Podcasts. whether you watch us on facebook or youtube or you listen to us on a completely different podcast app having a written review particularly in apple podcasts goes a really long way for us yes it does that's the one way, you know, people will tell you, oh, it helps with the algorithm, and it's, it, it's it, that's all a bunch of malarkey. What it really comes down to is, is that it it's does. A, it what? It does help with the algorithm. No, it doesn't. Oh. No, it doesn't. It, 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 oh, the more reviews that we get, blah, 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 it'll help us with exposure. Like, no, the more reviews means that you're, you're just, your show is popular, and what it comes down to is 
these people care enough to review your show and give nice words about it, and that helps other people discover it. It has nothing to do with Apple. It's just it, it, that it provides exposure in a way that is uniform and organic. Uh, and that is what we're trying to do because these reviews are word of mouth. And that is how most podcasts, the best podcasts, are proliferated throughout the community. It is done this way. So we want to thank Annie Onisti, who said, wow, I've just started listening to your podcast. I started watching Outlander last spring and I'm currently on the fifth book. I started listening to your podcast last week with the season six premiere. Then I went back and listened to your season one podcast. I just finished your discussion of La Dame Blanche, one of my favorite episodes. I find you both refreshing, smart, and funny. I look forward to being a faithful listener going forward. Thank you for your keen insight and love of Outlander. Oh, well, thank you so thank much. You, thank you so much. And we want to remind you all that we do have some exclusive Facebook communities, the Outlander Cast Clan Gathering and the Outlander Cast Clan Book Club for all of you book readers, where there's lots of great discussion. So if you know the future, if you yourself are a time traveler, that is definitely a group you want to check out now. Blake and I... Uh, have our own Facebook group, the Mary and Blake group there. And of course, in addition to podcasting, I would love to help you with your makeup needs. Just search the hashtag a minute with Mary on Instagram or Facebook, or you can just go to minute with Mary.com. Um, if you have any questions, makeup or skincare, I would love to be your makeup lady. All right. On that note, my name is Mary. My name is Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander cast. Thank you all so much. That was the podcast. That's a wrap. If you did not get to share it in the beginning, can you hit share now? That would be so awesome. So you could share on your wall, your stories and messenger and your outlander groups, all sorts of places. Share it with a friend, um, tag them. Sharing is caring. Just like Blake said, word of mouth is the way to go. You can also take a screenshot of this. If you don't know how to do a screenshot, write in the comments right now. I don't know how to screenshot. How does one do that? You can screenshot it, pop it in your stories. Let people know that if they're Outlander fans, that not only that this podcast exists, but they can join in the fun and take a listen as well. Um, I see people wishing <laughs> that I start to feel better. Thank you. Thank you. Today has been a rough rough day um i am hopefully getting some more help coming up soon we actually had two outlander cast episodes drop today so if you didn't see we had some listener feedback drop about an hour before this episode right yes so that should be in your podcast feed um right is it in the podcast feed yep, should okay be. should be there for you so enjoy we will be doing more to finish that one up as i just I'm dealing with a lot of fatigue today, so I wasn't able to finish all of the listener feedback. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Thank you again, and we'll talk with you soon.